WBAI. Thanks, this is Talk Mac. We're on to 12 o'clock. And uh, part of the tradition now that we're in our third year here every Wednesday from 10 to 12 is Corey Kilgannon has a column now every two weeks called The New York uh, Character. And uh, how did you find this guy? Because that's what always amazes me. Well, you read about the character and say, all right. But how, how did you find the, this coyote whisperer? Um, this guy has been in the papers um, uh, for a while because, uh, especially with this, the latest coyote gathering near LaGuardia Airport, uh, and he's been quoted in various uh, articles, especially in the New York. He was in a couple articles in the New York Post over the Christmas time because, uh, you know, here's a guy who shows up, you know, almost every night or had been showing up almost every night to try to save these coyotes as they were being euthanized. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, I figured, well, who is this guy who makes his life out of protecting coyotes? And it turns out he's a barber on Long Island. <laughs> and uh, in the evening, he locks up the shop. He's at 9 or 7. He's just trying to, we're trying to de decipher uh, the number. 9, 7, or 4? I can't. Where? We can't four. make out the number there. That's a 4. Three, one, it's a 4. Oh, it's 3, 1, 4. Mm. Yeah, yeah. All right, and then uh, but how were you tipped just by reading about it? Then you wanted to follow up on it. To, to yeah, I contacted him, and I did. And I once he started telling me about his devotion to these animals, you, you know, I, I got more interested because you know, you know, a guy who cuts head cuts hair uh, during the day and spends his nights, you know, protecting these coyotes, you know, that's some that's someone I want to talk to and see what motivates this guy. So yeah, and I visited him at his shop. We stopped in the evening at uh, what, what's at, his shop? His what, shop's a barber shop in Mineola, just maybe ten minutes past the Queens border. So he'll drive a half hour to LaGuardia Airport area. It's actually the entrance to Rikers Island. It's an interesting spot. There's a visitor's parking lot to Rikers Island. So it's right before the, the narrow bridge that leads to Rikers Island Jail Complex. And these coyotes, there was a kind of sliver of woods on either side of this parking lot, and the coyotes had taken up there. There were three adult coyotes that had come over from the Bronx. They may have come over on one of the bridges, maybe the Hellgate Bridge. And uh, they had pups. They had eight children in the summertime, or in the spring maybe. And these uh, and these pups got older and they started roaming around. And, uh, you know, coyotes aren't welcomed by a lot of people in New York City. People have a lot of conceptions about them that they're dangerous animals. They could, you know, they've been known to, you know, uh, to mess with cats and dogs and, you know, people's pets. And people and people have a notion that that they are dangerous to people. Uh, Frank, uh, who's on the line now, Frank Vincenti. Uh, we're going to ask him about what what are some of the, uh, the the conceptions and the popular conceptions of the coyote and 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 tell us how how you feel about them and uh, and, and even in a larger larger picture like what got you interested in coyotes that come into New York City, Frank? Uh, well, I I always liked coyotes. Uh, I, I know it uh, sounds like a cliche with some people. Uh, you know, since I was young. What were you uh, watching, uh, Roadrunner cartoons as a kid? Yeah, or? Warner Brothers and uh, Mutual of Omaha with uh, Wild Kingdom and, uh, you know, a major myself here, but... Uh, and and, you know, and in a cartoon, the, coyotes always, the coyote always loses, right? I mean... Yeah, he's the, he's the fall guy. He's the comic buffoon, you know, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> but, you know, he's, he's one of the most intelligent mammals around, and he's proven that by... Uh, you know, bouncing back and, and adapting and uh, colonizing, uh, you know, new areas. So you you got to begrudgingly give them credit for that. Right. And so then what was it? Like in the 90s, you had you had started hearing about coyotes coming into the Bronx, and then you, you took an interest in right. of course, well, the Wild I, Dog I, Foundation. You founded that right. group, right? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, that's my not-for-profit. Uh, I was part of other conservation groups. I was part of an effort to bring wolves back to the Northeast, but my interests were not just with wolves. It was with uh, all members of the dog family. So I, uh, my flagship animal was African wild dogs, which are critically endangered. They still are. And, you know, locally, coyote and fox. Uh, coyotes have been part of New York State for over 200 years, uh, uh, recently, they've, they've only been documented within the last uh, 170 to 100 years, but uh, fossils show coyotes were part of the Northeast as well. But, uh, yeah, coyotes keep me busy. I, I've been speaking on them since the early 90s, trying to educate people. And what, what, what do you educate them about? I know that a lot of, especially in the suburbs in Westchester, I mean, they do come down from upstate, and people 
do not like these animals because of the fear of what would happen to their pet. And it's not just an unfounded fear. I mean, it is. If you leave your dog out at night or you have your cat out at night, I mean, there can be problems, right? Right. Well, I mean, you know, it's, uh, coyotes are common sense animals, uh, and unfortunately there's very little of that. Uh, I mean, a, a lot of the uh, incidents are, are, you know, embellished. Uh, coyote, uh, you know, uh, wolves have made a complete turnaround as far as public perception. You know, a lot of people lo like wolves. There's uh, over 100 groups in the United States alone dedicated to the wolf. Coyotes, unfortunately, still being common and uh, not endangered, although, you know, just as, if not more, persecuted than wolves uh, were or, or now are. Uh, you know, they, they, you know, people deal with them, and, uh, you know, because the conflicts are there, uh, they, they, they harbor ill will. Uh, you know, it's, it's, Coyotes are really not looking to to get involved with with people. You know, they they just go about their business, surviving and it's scavenging really, food, right? Yeah. Well, uh, they're, they're they're hunters. They're they're efficient hunters. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll take what's easiest. You know, all predators are, would, but uh, you know, they're 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 vital to the ecology. They're important to Westchester. They're important to New York State, and they're important to New York City, and eventually Long Island. Yeah, uh, I found you know, it interesting that you said when you were showing up almost on a nightly basis near LaGuardia Airport with these with right. this coyote family, you were going right. around talking to local people, and there's a ball field next to it, and the people who were showing up at the right. kids' ball games and trying to tell them that listen, they're not going to come up and attack you. They're right. uh, they're important for them. I mean, they've been scaring off geese. They've been hunting rats, and and in this way, they're kind of ecologically you know vital. What was right. the reaction you got? I mean, a lot of people don't respond o overall well, positively to this, though, right? You know, to, to be honest with you, uh, the, the people I spoke to were very supportive in having them. I mean, uh, you know, there are certainly many people I couldn't reach. And, you know, I really had a lot of plans uh, here, but I was just not getting accommodated by people that could have made it happen. Uh, I wanted to give talks locally. I wanted to give talks to the ball teams, uh, uh LaGuardia employees uh, just never came to fruition, and uh, you know authorities decided to kill them. But uh, how the did people they do that? that? I, well, they're never going to tell me, you know, exactly how they did it. But uh, most likely, they were caught in either leg hold traps uh, and uh, either administered euthanasia, or uh, they were, uh, you know, they were killed. Uh, you know, in some other fashion while they were restrained. And how did you uh, try to keep the coyotes alive? I tried to keep them out of public view. I mean, they, you know, the coyotes and the people seemed to adapt. Uh, there was never any, uh, and neither one were perturbed by each other. I mean, like I said, I'm sure there were people that, uh, you know, had misconceptions, but the people I spoke to enjoyed having them. Even the people on the ball field, it's, you know, they mostly saw the puppies. The adults kept out of view. The, the adults were behaving normally Most like coyotes sad. should. Right. Yeah. Uh, but I would, I would chase them and, and try to get them not too relaxed out in the open, which, you know, I, it's, uh, you know, for, for one person to do it. I, I had some help with LaGuardia employees, and there were a couple of great uh, corrections officers that helped out. But, you know, it's something that had to be done on a continuous basis. What about the uh, the smelling from a court, Frank? Uh, when, How you doing? Uh, good. The uh, uh, this phrase, euthanize, uh, uh, it always, it always uh, amazes me that uh, they actually kill the coyotes and uh, so that's right. that's what i would say uh, yeah it's too gentle now how is that done well if they were doing the euthanasia i mean they they use all sorts of methods to uh to you know the, to kill the animals uh you know they could either strike them uh you know across the head uh, or actually go either shoot them, them or really yeah well coy coyotes uh Listen, coyotes have this uh, undeserved fierceness, yeah. and they really are not. Uh, and you know, I'm—I mean, uh, I'm grateful to Corey for his article and everything. I, I'm very indebted to him. He, he met me in person. I, I'm not the most intimidating-looking guy, <laughs> you know, uh, trying to be humble. But 
you know, coyotes become submissive when they're, they're confronted by confident and authoritative, uh, you know, behavior. Same with wolves. I mean, these are pack animals that adhere to a rigid dominance hierarchy. And, uh, you know, it, it, coyotes caught in traps, although I've never approached them in a trap, I've approached them as they were, you know, out in the open, yeah. uh, which people would would seem more resigned not to do, whereas, you know, when they're restrained in a trap, they actually become very, very submissive, and they may bluff you, but, uh, you know, if you're, if you're experienced with coyotes, you get past that, and they become limp like a submissive dog, and they're easy to dispatch, unfortunately. Well, uh, the, the similarity, in a sense, I think you mentioned uh, the, the fox, and uh, uh, there's a huge reaction to that uh, ridiculous... Uh, 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 occupation of fox hunting in uh, in Great Britain and, and Ireland. It, oh, it right, is, uh, yeah. I think Oscar Wilde, I think, said that it was the uh, the unspeakable in pursuit of the uneatable. Yeah, and, it's very uh, unsportsmanlike. And it is, uh, and so here you have a bunch of dogs tearing uh, this animal apart, and I never understood right. what is why would they call that a sport. Right. Well, they're doing that with coyotes now, too, in the United States. Uh, in some regions, uh, especially here in the Northeast, and it's becoming popular in New York State, unfortunately, uh, because coyotes have expanded and done well, and they're far from endangered. Uh, you know, the, uh, 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 an interest in sport hunting coyotes uh, has grown. And a lot of the uh, old fox hunting clubs in Connecticut and uh, parts of New England are actually reverting to, uh, you know, having their hounds chase down and, and attack the coyotes instead. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I wanted to point out that Frank, uh, you know, like the coyote, uh, Frank is a nocturnal being with his passion for coyotes. I mean, mostly at <laughs> night because he has a day job, and, yeah. and the day job is interesting. I thought it was interesting too, Frank. I'm Frank, a vampire too. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, um, you know, he runs a barber shop that's been in his family for five generations. Uh, it's owned and operated by five and Fra is, Frank uh, Vincentis. <laughs> You're the fifth yeah. Frank, right? Where yeah, we it? have no, we have no imagination. We we all name each other the same names. Right. Where is where is this? Is in Mineola, uh, New York, uh, and um, do you uh, shave coyotes? Island. And what? Do yeah. you shave coyotes? No, no, no. They need their fur. Uh, <laughs> they're bad chip coyotes are bad tippers, so I don't. Uh, <laughs> But Barbie. the shop is, you know, it's interesting when you go into a barber shop and there's all these pictures on the on the wall of all different kinds of, you know, cuts and haircuts and that type of thing. Like Frank's wall says all pictures of coyotes and other wild yeah, dogs. Yeah, well, I, I, I know what people look like. I see them all day long. <laughs> I'm I'm probably sick I like of, looking yeah. at coyotes. What kind of teeth do coyotes have? What kind of teeth? Yes. <laughs> uh, it, it, uh, you know what? The, the best description I've heard uh, is that any similar sized dog, uh, yeah. uh, coyotes have the same exact dentition as a domestic dog. Uh, uh, they're not vegetarian. They're, uh, you know, they are technically carnivores, but they they're literally uh, omnivores. Uh, in fact, you know, all the canines, the wild canines, the fox, and even the wolf, you know, are technically omnivores. They. Uh, they can't solely subsist on vegetation or or fruits or whatever, but they they certainly uh, they so, certainly will consume it. Uh, coyotes in some parts of the country uh, actually could subsist on watermelons, uh, especially in the southeast. Uh, do they, do they go? Do they go after fish? Yeah, they'll eat fish. Uh, there's some great video of coyotes uh, hunting for salmon in in uh, parts of the Pacific Northwest, like and the bears. Just like the bears, yeah. uh, wolves wolves will do it too. Uh, you know, they're they're just incredibly adaptable, and like I said, even those that don't like them have to give them some sort of respect for their their ability did, to survive. Did you ever read uh, the book uh, Cry Wolf by a uh, Canadian author, and I can't think of right. his name right now, but he yeah, wrote, he, Far Farley Mo Moat. Uh, Moat, that's right, and right. Uh, that was what that actually uh, it, 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 in a certain way. That book humanized the wolf because the wolf is right. such a, a family oriented and, and Coyo coyotes too. Coyotes I, 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 are just little wolves. <laughs> that is amazing. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, I got uh, you know the the, uh, the the this Laguardia incident is still a very sore and uh, 
a painful topic. Uh, you know, I got to know these animals pretty intimately watching them. Uh, many other people did, too, that have watched them, uh, and they, they were endearing to many. Uh, you know, I got to see some private uh, situations that most people, even those that, you know, uh, you know, those people that do have an incident with their dogs, uh, you know, it's a real thing, and I'm empathetic to them. But, you know, I got to see sides of the coyote, you know, which I've known about all my life, but having to see it personally that, you know, really would have uh, changed a lot of people's You're attitudes. You're the whisperer, I, man. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, you can't whisper at coyotes. You don't want to attract them to you. You want right. to yell at them and get them to move well, on. But, so, but coyotes do live in New York City as we speak, right? Where do they, yeah. where, where do they live? Well, the, the Bronx has had a uh, uh, population for the last... Uh, uh, it probably say four decades, and they've been breeding well within the last 20 years. Uh, uh, I actually helped uh, set up cameras with uh, researchers underneath the Whitestone Bridge where where they had denned for two years straight. I, I can't say for sure if they successfully denned this past year, but uh, they're doing well in the Bronx. Uh, so could, you, could, you give us, could you give us a, a coyote howl? Can you uh, imitate him? Can you make not one? Without, not, on, without da- not without damaging people's ears <laughs> and uh, having to d- go through litigation through that. Do they have uh, uh, Do they have love language or uh, uh, a love language? language? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, coyotes are Coyotes are Pillow the most talk, vocal. Yeah, <laughs> coyotes are the most vocal of all the yeah. wild canines, even more so than wolves. And yeah. and uh, you know, just because they have such a diverse range of vocalizations they bark they howl they yeah. yip uh they're, they're, but they're, but it's all straightforward meaning i mean a lot of it is cursing out rival coyotes just like wolves do <laughs> wolves are cur- you know the wolves howling uh really are howling at rival wolf packs to stay away and you know sometimes it's just to rally uh lost pack mates in the forest and uh sometimes it's just uh, for the heck of it, and th- there's no full moon howling. That's that's Hollywood. All right, Frank, man, thanks for coming on. It's it's always a pleasure. It's always it's always an Thank education. You. And I should mention that the Irishman you were talking to here, Malachi McCord, he's as self educated right. as you are. I mean, Frank, you didn't you came out of high school and basically went into cut, cutting hair. But I, you know, I was I was kind of a, uh, surprised to see the stacks of research books, not just on coyotes, but you're really into history, European history, and you're yeah, really like I, a, you, you've done a I, lot of reading, right? In between, I love, I love, the, I love the great geese uh, for the Irish, the, the roving mercenaries that fought for uh, oh, the, their, wi- their, the, the wild geese. Yeah, mm-hmm. the wild geese. I'm sorry, I thought it was the, yeah. I'm thinking of the vodka. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't drink though. Yeah, yeah, no, they're 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 heroic people. The the wild geese. Uh, they fought the, the, for the French. That's right, the Irish Brigade. Yep. <coughs> the wild geese. Excellent. In far foreign fields from Dunkirk to Belgrade lied the soldiers <laughs> and chiefs of the Irish Brigade. They were the wild geese. There you go. Yeah. See, the Irish are always more funny in this, than the Italians. We're always worried about something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I have a talk this weekend in Smithtown at the library. If, I don't know if you have any Long Island listeners, but. Well, shout I'll it out. Speaking, yeah, I'll Smithtown be speaking Island. about these. Yeah, at 2 o'clock, so I'll get you out before Super Bowl. When is it? What? <laughs> this what? Sunday at 2 o'clock. 2 p.m. in Smith Town Library. Smith Town Library, great. You're yeah. going to take some more abuse from homeowners, huh? Uh, I, I'm hoping it's going to, I hope people come. I mean, it's Super Bowl Sunday. People are probably baking uh, buffalo chicken wings that the coyotes would love, but don't ever give it to them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Frank, thanks a lot. I'll talk thanks, Kurt. Thank yeah. you. Okay. And you're listening to WBAI, and that was the New York Character of the Week in the Sunday New York Times. You know what, Corey? Oh. Uh, Corey, after all these years now doing them and having on these characters, there seems to be a running theme. It's people... Do I need psychiatric help? Yes, uh, I do. No, not you, but no, people uh, are... Not so much to heads of organizations or big groups, but they focus in on one thing. Like we had on, I think, two weeks ago, the guy that collects garbage but found unbelievable stuff. This guy with the coyotes. The characters you have are really focused in 
on one particular subject. item. Let's call them obsession, yeah. John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're obsessed. <laughs> but that's but, that, but that's what I mean. That's really even what, handball. You had the guy from handball. Coney Island. I mean, this is what they, I mean. This yeah. is what you want. I mean, like because mm -hmm. you know they really they have their niche and they really live for it, and it's, it's just makes for that's who you want. It makes for a good column. When, you know, you get someone who's who's really you know focused on that one thing and they live for it. You know. Yeah. Like I said, the the barber shop walls were lined with. I mean, if you walk into a barbershop, would you do a double take about, uh, you yeah, know? Yeah, because normally you would see uh, movie stars that they cut their hair yeah. or somebody that was in from a TV right. or stuff like that. Right, yeah. you're seeing Coyote in the wild and uh, you're wondering, huh? Well, also, of mm -hmm. course, uh, you would think that they only uh, shave Coyotes and cut their hair yeah. if you saw them on the wall. Right. So mm -hmm. no, no humans served here. 